Yo, what's up? We are here in the cold eastern front assaulting the beautiful Mana, one of the most beautiful maps but also one of the hardest to play maps because this is literally assault. And this means it's basically extremely hard invasion mode which is hardcore defender biased. Why is that so? Because we have to conquer two objectives at the same time and the enemies can also always retake them. So it's literally just extremely stupidly hard. But since our hopeless noob tries to become a good player, we have to tackle that challenge too. Let's go. Now I attacked here on the right side. And the right side is very susceptible to artillery strikes, but of course our radio man already died. Okay. <laughs> yes, at least we have our Italian engineer. Our only Italian soldier in the whole army. That, that wasn't afraid of the cold. And we also already have the MP40s. They're not, uh, they're not upgraded yet. But still, quite good. <laughs> still good enough. Especially if you do headshots. Yeah, very beautiful. Absolutely love the MP40s. Took me multiple weeks, I don't know, like more than, more, almost two months to grind for them. Because you have to grind for, through, I think, 10 SMGs exactly until you get the MP40. And most of the SMGs are just horribly bad. I tried them out. Yes, they were even worse than expected when I decided to give them a chance. And Curious Tank Commander got sniped. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, that's what you get for being careless in the battlefield. <laughs> okay, now... What's the strategy for us? Yep, MG dual wielding for the win. If we didn't have the second one, we couldn't have done anything. Yeah, we already have a rally. What we need is we need to establish rally points for both objectives and then just do concentrated pushes. This is how you how you can successfully win. The only thing that makes... Oh, you bastard. The only thing that gives attackers an assault possibly a little advantage is if the natural spawns for the defenders are very far away because then oh damn it that's a very close apc <laughs> because then as long as you kill the enemy rally points as an attacker and have close ones you get quite a good advantage and even your natural spawns should be closer than the any natural enemy spawns but yeah once again the sword extremely hard so what i i can camp now and just hope a spawn squad, uh, a squad spawns there, and just clean out the, the. Yeah, I don't have a way to destroy this tank, sadly. This whole squad, though apparently no one wants to spawn on this APC. So yeah, let's go there. Looks like he saw the grenade coming and started running. Nope, you ain't gonna leave. We lost our rally, and our team doesn't seem to build rallies. All right, yeah. <laughs> okay, we the first wave was completely pointless we don't didn't get anything done now second wave it can only get better from here yep plan is now rush with an apc call artillery strike so we finally get some kills and then yes a can't be striked it's a brick and mortar house but b is just a random barracks yeah the a objective is completely different you can't just shell it with stuff since it's it's very solid, and it's next to the to these hills. These hills give you the high ground as an attacker, so you can shoot nicely into the enemy spawn area, but you're also quite exposed, so it's a very tricky part. Okay, enemy bombers coming. We have like 45 seconds before we get blown up, so we need to do some smart. Strategizing. Alright, very good. Our teammates already kept A. Now, we have... Yep, if we hurry up, we will have enough time to capture B before the artillery strike blows everything up. Very good, let's go. Oh, nah. That's not what I wanted. Okay, we need to make sure no one's shooting us from the side while we keep pushing there. Oh, yeah, the headache is real. I basically never give my soldiers the anti-head shake perk. Only to the tankers, because they're literally... They, there's not really much that they can 
use and quite often they get bombed and, and uh, blown up by stuff so the anti headshake perk can actually be useful even more than the aim stability perk because well guess what <laughs> the, 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 the head shake is more common for them that's a problem okay oh my god that's way too many ah I still have two fancy grenades for them Okay, it's good that we have a firm grip on A. Apparently our team is capable of doing that, which is good. Now it's my task to... Oh, first of all to harass this random dude here. Oh yes, there's another one. Okay, I don't know where the other one disappeared to, but okay. Yeah, we need to take B. But A is under attack. Oh, yeah. You see, that's the... That's the displeasure of assault. <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah, that's the displeasure, of, and it's obviously not symmetrical because we 100% need to hold both points at the same time to to advance. But the enemies, as long as they even have one percent of one point, they're still holding it. So that's why most people just leave assault. They hate assault because it's just unfair. Okay, at least we are capping B now. Very good. And the bomber rate also ended. Oh my god. Yep, we need to spam some structures in there. Okay. One good rally for B and one or two squads are in B. Now we can... Yeah, we should hold B. Our team should hold B. So if we focus a good attack on A, we should get it and advance to the next points. Don't worry if you think this is too easy, the next points are even harder, so... <laughs> the the pain never stops with assault. The biggest shame is this mana map is actually really beautiful. I mean, we don't even see the, the castle itself yet. Uh, uh, Tsarist era European architecture inspired little castle. Very beautiful. The Russian aristocrats really like to roleplay French aristocrats and just copy their not only their language uh, and art but also architecture. And of course, the commies just uh, took everything away. And that's why we're fighting for it now. All right, we got A. We're gonna we're gonna give our enemies a present here with the mine. <laughs> I hope they still spawn before the objective switch, because I don't want to lose this funny moment. Oh yes, let's help our teammates cap B by just killing all the reinforcements. You see how little recoil this thing has? Yeah, that's insane. That's the power of MP40s. It's just, it just the most flavorful, like the most famous, especially for normies, the most fla famous World War II weapon on German side. Every movie depicts MP40s, although they were much rarer in real life, but, but still. Very famous. Also very fun to use. Oh, he's trying it again. Yeah, I I don't think I placed a mine over there. That's usually the funniest thing you can do. Just place an uh, anti-personal mine on a structure like that. So whenever someone wants to use it, he gets a present. The best thing you can do is actually... Place an anti-tank mine there, and an anti-personal mine, so you, whenever someone gets close, his whole squad dies from the big explosion, and the anti-tank mine gets explode, exploded too, and obviously the anti-personal mine triggers the anti-tank mine in that case. Nice, we finally got it, very good, our strategy worked. Oh, <sighs> okay. Now the actually hard part begins, because whereas the previous objectives were remotely close, these are ridiculously far away. And we got rooftop comrades. Yeah, a welcome grenade. And no kills. <laughs> How did I miss his head? I don't know. Yeah, but his head I didn't miss. Very nice. Yeah, MP40 is actually ridiculously good if you just hip fire it. I still need to get used to it, but hip firing this thing is insanely. Not only insanely strong, but also insanely fun. Yeah, I need to get uh, used more to to the head to the head heave. 
Keep in mind though, Japanese soldiers are a bit smaller than other soldiers in the game, so if you get perfectly used to shooting at the heads or pre-aiming at heads, you will be thrown off if you play against Japanese. Yeah, that's all part of the Emperor's genius strategy. Alright, so once again same tactic or same approach. You see the just bum rushing a point, even if we cap it, we will be dead eventually. And we need follow up pressure, and this is only possible with 30 points and APCs. Yep. These are also solid structures, so we need to artillery strike close to them. With a, where there are highly likely enemies, and obviously the trench, because everyone builds rallies and trenches. I think I didn't get the chance to build a rally yet, except for the very beginning of the game. Ah, yeah. I built definitely one, and I remember how it got destroyed, and then I had to take the APC. Okay, now... This very impressive big fence is... It has holes, but whatever. I don't think anyone will be able to shoot through those holes into our APC, so... Let's go. Oh my god, this is the Soviet mantle. And we got NKVD LAPAS over there. It's raining Soviets. Definitely. If you want to have fun when it's autumn, just listen to It's Raining Man when autumn begins. I do it every year and it's it, it's very fun. Okay, let's try out the engineer squad that we unlocked. Well, we cannot though. I just... I, I looked at it and instantly saw, yeah, no radio man. No radio man. And no SMGs. Because it can only have assault rifles. Though I wrote people a dark force so they fucking change it. Because yeah, it's it's super bad for beginners. If if there's a very, very much hyped up event squad. But you can literally not really use it as a beginner because it's just worse than a normal engineer squad if you're a beginner since you don't have since you don't have radio man. Or you don't have entertain gunners too. Oh that was a good one. This dude ain't seeing nothing anymore. Oh yes. Yep, easily dealt with. That's why we play our engineers with three grenades. Yeah, my standard lineup is now one frag grenade, one TNT and one Molotov. Molotov for fast reaction and for fun and because it looks cool. And because it's... Oh, that's a damn big crater. Wow. And because it's like a little bit like a small grenade because you can't see through it. And and you can quickly affect enemy tanks with it and then have enough time to TNT them. And the frag grenade obviously because it's by far the best grenade, especially after the recent buff against infantry. Oh you motherfucker. Nice. Fuck off here, dude. This is our mainer now. Yeah, we are the aristocrat now. <laughs> okay. Somehow our teammates managed to cap C. Wonderful. Look at them headshots, though. Yeah, that's the advantage if they're lining up behind a perfectly horizontal roof of the bunker. I literally just need to follow the roof <laughs> outline and everyone gets a headshot like it's an Oprah show. Yeah, this dude too. This, yeah, that's what I like. Enemies who are hiding and only exposing their heads. Just absolute, absolute fun to aim at. Okay, Mr. Mickley, time to capture the last point. This one is at least very easy to cap. It's the opposite of the other ones. It's very easy to cap. Because the enemies are far away spawning. We are close. Some of them spawn inside. At the beginning. But, but as long as you instantly push after capping the previous point, you will be here in like 10 seconds, which is exactly what we did. Alright, where, where them Soviets at? Must be inside. Yep, get out of here, dude. Get out of here, dude. Nice. Yes, this Hubert is savage. 
He's absolutely savage. Oh, you... Ah. Okay, his ass isn't bulletproof, sadly. Alright, time for our secret weapon. The AP this APC served us ridiculously well. Every time we started a successful capture, this APC was part of it, basically. And yes, we have the artillery strike. Nice. Nice. Doesn't even matter we can't strike the objective itself, because they will be all outside. And if they're inside, we're just gonna grenade them. And no one can get inside, because there's artillery outside. So, yeah. Try to deal with dead Soviets. But look how fucking beautiful this map is. Like, this inside there with the trees, the eastern front trees are ridiculously beautiful. Damn it, very nice. This looks like it was transformed into a field hospital, though. Yeah, like, there are very many strange-looking beds, I don't know. Alright. Did I see a grenade on the ground? I think we need to be careful. Though it might be a friend... Nah, I don't know. Yeah, I shouldn't have gotten too distracted thinking about the grenade. <laughs> well, yeah, whenever you get down, just release all of your grenades. Especially if you have triple... The triple grenade setup is fucking perfect, because... I released the, the fragmentation and the TNT first, and the Molotov last. So, there's... Pl I don't instantly die from the Molotov. And anyone who runs away quick enough will die. So, <laughs> and also the enemies can't really get on the burning area. So, perfect. Right, we have plenty of lives, and we even have time to breathe to use these engineers. The big advantage of engineer squads, obviously, you just place an structure and just order the others to build it, so you can save time. Okay, let's have fun with a nice MG nest. Let's go, Soviets. Well, I expected more. And by that, that <laughs> we didn't see anyone, so yeah, of course. Okay, let's give them the... Oh my god. Ah, now they're coming, damn it. Very bad timing. Did you just throw it back, or was it a song? I don't know. Oh my god, yeah, yes, yes. I should have been just patient. Yeah, I should have been more patient and just waited on the machine gun, because they... They... They will eventually come, yeah? So that was stupid for me. <sighs> okay. At least our ready point is still up. It seems like we have an APC and two ready points here. Oh, so it's a smart, they're getting upstairs. That's very good. Alright. Let's make sure no Soviet is here behind. Alright. One more Soviet, but I guess it doesn't matter. Oh. Yeah, you see, enemies can easily tank two two MP40 shots into the body. They just keep running. But that's normal for SMGs, obviously. The game should have a slowdown feature when you take damage that you... that you... that you, like, con contract a little bit and you, they slow down to make it more real. It would be very cool, actually. That would increase the value of, like, spraying weapons, too, that don't deal too much damage. Alright, yeah, I can't believe it, almost, we actually won Assault. <laughs> yeah, so what did we do? Well, we just played Disciplined and made sure we always set up the good infrastructure in terms of rallies and APCs, and then we just crush our enemies. Yeah, that's how we do it. If you look at the score, the enemies had some really good defenders, the first player obviously did all the work, and their fourth player did some really good defensive work. We also had, as you can see, multiple players who constantly built ready points, like f two, at least four players who did some work and also APCs. I can't remember spawning on a, on a friendly APC besides mine, so most likely low, like new players who don't have access to APCs yet. 
But yeah, our team did great work, great teamwork. This is exactly how you play. Especially on Lobia. Because on Lobia, where the power level of weapons isn't that high, the synergy is much more important than just spraying around with overpowered weapons. Also, a very good reflection of the early war, especially on the Eastern Front, where Germany also had overall le worse equipment than the Soviets had, but they had way better coordination. Way better coordination. Famous example, the tank coordination. Soviets had superior tanks to Germany in almost every way, but they didn't have radios and they were way worse commanded in most cases. So, yeah, that's how you win. That's how you win. That's also the big charm about Lobia enlisted. The Lobia battles are just, they feel more realistic and they just, they're, they're cooler and feel more like fun. At least to me. Let me know what you think about this topic and also about this map in, in general because I, I find it's a shame how one of the nicest looking maps in the game is just butt with bullshit modes like Conquest and Assault. We don't even have Invasion for this map. Alright, until next time, goodbye.